as a preface to this video, I just wanted to show you a couple of photos of what happens when you have an exhaust leak with fuel injection. And I know better. I have done videos talking about how exhaust leaks are bad, and I've helped others um, with bad exhaust leaks. And even then, I was still in a little bit denial because um, I thought I heard an exhaust leak, and I couldn't quite find it, and we did eventually find out that it was head, um, for those that have been following it. Um, there was a bad braze joint, but um, I kind of chalked it up to a noisy sniper. Um, th that wasn't it. It was an exhaust leak, and not even really a bad exhaust leak. But um, let's just go through some of these photos and take a look at the top of these pistons. That's not oil. That is, um, that's tarnishing from severe overfueling on D-cell, um, because the O2 being fooled to think that it's lean uh, when it's not from excess uh, oxygen in the exhaust. This is what happens. And I, even me, who I've done plenty of fuel injection systems and I was in denial and thought I had a sniper issue and I didn't. It simply an exhaust leak caused all of these problems. Luckily, it didn't cause any damage to the engine. As you can see, it's, uh, it, it cleans up uh, in this last photo here. Uh, it just cleaned up with some acetone. There's no damage. The rings didn't glaze the cylinders or anything like that. Um, so we got lucky, but you know, this is uh, just keep an eye out for exhaust leaks. So the head is just about uh, off the car, but I'm going to attack it tomorrow. Uh, Dan's coming over to help. This is uh, the new head that Jeff sent me. Uh, I got it painted up today. Uh, I put the adapter on it because he ships it without it so it doesn't get broken off. Uh, it fits in the box a little bit better. And uh, I put the thermostat housing on it. Uh, I find it's easier with the power steering bracket where it comes in here to get this all bolted up. Let it. I put a little ultra gray on it just to keep it in place. Pull this bolt out once it's in and uh, reinstall the bracket. I just find it it's just hard to finagle this um, thermostat in here otherwise it just doesn't uh, it doesn't like to go so anyways um this is uh what is this a 78 yeah d8 so this is a 78 head um it does not have the issue obviously that the one that's in the car does the ones in the car right in this corner here where that casting flashing is it looks really ugly it's been repaired there i imagine that might be a problem with their casting it might have been repaired who knows when um, but it on that head comes right down here into the three four port really number three but you know three four kind of share the port so it's re it goes all the way down into here uh you can tell jeff probably had issues or whoever pulled the manifold off jeff had to put some helicoils in here very typical of these heads uh to find helicoils in them uh they're totally fine there's nothing wrong with that as a repair um so Tomorrow, we'll go ahead and plop this on, and we'll take you guys along with us to do it. I did want to show you guys something, too, before we put the head on. Um, just as a check, I let the uh, RTV uh, cure. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but the plate gets RTV underneath it because there really isn't a gasket. I could make a gasket. I've got some gasket material, but RTV works great. You know, you put it on finger tight, let it sit for an hour, torque it to spec an hour later, and, and that stuff... This is right stuff 90 that's on here too so it really seals um in 90 minutes it's it's done and then i just put a little bit of grease on here this is just some uh, polyurethane bushing grease but it works great as like a, a vacuum grease is very similar um that helps seal this because i just made this uh back when i was smoke testing the old head i don't think i showed that but um looking for vacuum leaks and stuff um so I went ahead and uh, just used that to pull a vacuum on this. And I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, there was no leaks or anything like that. Um, you know, the RTV sealed and everything else. And uh, it's slow because, you know, these, these little hand pumps are only so good. But, you know, you can see it's holding almost 10 inches of vacuum. And uh, it's not bleeding off at all. Um, so that's great. It's, it's, it is moving very 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 slowly um, that's going to be going past the valves for sure um, but this is absolutely acceptable for an engine um, there's no severe leaks or anything like that anywhere uh, you know the plugs are sealed there isn't a you know a valve problem or the this isn't leaking you know 
So I just want to show you guys just real quick. That's a, that's a quick thing that you can do. You know, I just made this out of, this is like quarter inch plexi. Um, and I just put a, a vacuum or just put a, a brass fitting in it. I just tapped it quarter inch NPT. As usual, I went and got ahead of myself without videoing anything. Um, but not a whole lot of magic here. And you guys have seen me do this before. We got the manifold off to the side down there. Sorry, the lighting is just real extreme. It's early. Uh, we got all the studs out. You want to make sure if you got studs, you take them all out. Uh, don't leave any of them in there trying to take it off. It's just a headache. Get it all out of there. Then when we put it back in, we'll do the four corners. Um, so I'm just going to bring the hoist in here. It's just, I've hucked it in and out of here so many times now. I learned last time just to use the hoist now that I have it. So uh, I'm just going to bring it and cherry pick it right out. There's really no magic to it. All right. Let's get this thing off of here. Um, like I said, we're going to use the cherry picker. This piece of equipment is uh, invaluable. Totally overkill to pull ahead, but I'll tell you what, it just saves your back. And uh, if I didn't mention this before, and uh, don't do this at home, folks, but this cherry picker is modified. Um, I've extended it well beyond where it's supposed to be. However, I'm only lifting 62 pounds, so I can get away with that. You know, don't try and lift an engine with the thing extended eight inches further than they designed it from the factory. That's just not smart. So just keep that in mind. Now, the only thing with this cherry picker is um, it doesn't have a swivel hook on the end because it's a cheap Harbor Freight unit. So, <laughs> the head's going to want to swing. Um, the head is kind of stuck on here, which is good. That means that the sealant worked last time. So let's see how much trouble it gives us here. Oh, yeah, she's on there, good. And you don't want to go too far with it because it'll pop and it'll go flying and you'll break stuff. So I'm probably going to have to help it along here a little bit. I don't want to put too much pressure. If you preload this and wait for it to go, it's going to go bang and you're going to have parts flying everywhere. So you don't want that. So I'm just putting just enough pressure on it where I can try and break this sucker loose. I might have to get a, uh, might have to get a pry bar. Oh yeah, man, that thing is on there. Probably going to have to go fetch me a pry bar and I can get it right under here. Oh, you know what? I got my, uh, do it this way. Wow. Boy, she is on there. And I didn't forget any hardware. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep. That sealant is just really good stuff. All right, let me go get a pry bar. Wow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this off of here as easily as I thought. find a uh, purchase point Use a little block of wood here to crib this up wow 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 huh I wasn't expecting that. I figured it would come off, you know, with a little bit of force. But no, it's, um, it is on there. I hate putting this much pressure on it. But uh, what else can you do? All right, hang on a second. So I've just been trying to figure out another angle to pry it from, and it is, there isn't, there, there just quite simply isn't another place to pry it from. Just, uh, the more pressure I put on it, the more it worries me, it's just going to go bang. I don't want to bend that 
power steering bracket. Boy, just give me second thoughts of whether I want to do this again. Of course, it's got one hell of a seal. It, this definitely means it was not leaking anywhere because there's no way it could. Let me get another piece of wood. Maybe I can get two pieces in there. And for the folks that are kind of new to this stuff, you know, these are kind of second nature things that hit a lot of people that have been working on cars for a while. But yeah, you can grab pieces of wood and find purchase points, you know, and just kind of evaluate whether it's an area you can put pressure on. You know, this uh, power steering bracket is pretty stout. Yeah, that thing isn't coming off. I'm going to have to really think about how I want to get this off. It's the thought of heat starting to hit me. The other thing that crossed my mind, too, you know, I could just, you know, crank it over and let a little compression pop it off. That might, um, that might do it some good. I got some tension on here. I don't want to put too much, but it's got some tension on it. It just does not, she just does not want to move. All right, folks. Well, I'm sorry. I got it, and I wasn't filming. Um, I had to get my pry bar, which I really didn't want to do, but it's in an area that's not that critical. I had to put my pry bar down here on the edge of the head in a place where it doesn't really matter and then pry up against it that way. It was the only way I could get it off. Um, so, but it, it popped and I just had a little pressure on it. You can see it's just, you know, an inch above. So not a lot, not a lot of jump there, but it looks to me like it separated the gasket in half. So this is going to be a big mess to clean up and I'm really kind of debating whether I want to do it this way again. but. The flip side is it's sealed. It's sealed really well, so I don't know. I'm going to have to think on this and see if this is how I want to do it. All right, so at this point, um, I'm just going to spend a bunch of time cleaning uh, the gasket, like I said, separated. Uh, luckily, the metal half of the gasket, because the way these gaskets are constructed, they have a metal um, core or steel core. Uh, luckily, that's separated with the head, so it's just composite material or a fiber gasket material that's left. I'm going to scrape it off. Gone ahead and filled the lifter pockets with um, some uh, shop towels just to keep the crap out of there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the coolant in the block and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck the coolant out of there after I'm done with this. That way any crap that's in there will come out with the coolant. Um, that way it's not floating around in our cooling system. So we want to clean it first and then do that. So this is just a tedious process. I've got one of these scrapers, razor blade. I change them out every so often because they do ding up a little bit. And uh, we'll just keep going at it and scraping it off. So cleanliness is uh, key here, folks. I mentioned that before. Just make sure you get it really clean um, and you know wipe it down really well with acetone or lacquer thinner or some kind of solvent. I prefer acetone. It really doesn't leave... Um, it works very well, it's pretty aggressive, and it doesn't leave anything behind. So we're just going to keep going at this and wipe it down. I'm going to wait uh, a little bit to put it back on. Um, my friend Dan, you'll remember if you follow my videos when we did his uh, Camaro V6 water pump. Uh, Dan's going to come by, he's going to give me a hand putting it on. It's a little bit easier to get this lined up, putting the head back on uh, with two people. So uh, even with studs, it's still easier because one person can control the cherry picker, the other person can handle the head. Um, and then I didn't mention this either. Um, so John Campanaga from uh, the Vintage 6 uh, Mustang Forum. Uh, John is driving out here from Georgia to pick up his engine from Jeff up in Fresno, and he's passing right through here. So he's going to go ahead and stop by this afternoon. And um, John's... Uh, going to do me a big favor and he's going to take the head back up to Jeff um, that way Jeff was going to pay to he, he paid to ship down here and he was going to pay to ship it back but I figured you know John's passing through we'll save Jeff a couple bucks um, you know shipping ahead so John's going to haul it back up for me so that's real nice of him but I'll get to meet him which is pretty cool so uh, anyways we're just going to keep going at this get this clean I got the studs in the ultrasonic with some uh, purple power that works pretty well to get the you want to get the old uh, molly off of there so they're nice and clean uh, for the new uh, lube so uh, we'll just keep going at this one of these days I'll take this chassis and put it back in the astrosonic but works pretty good here in the garage right now you guys have to love my ADD so this is the old head and I, I did want to show this 
real quick. This is where the putty is. The exhaust leak um, is right in this corner here that goes right down into the 3-4 port. So there was some kind of a repair that was done at some point in its lifetime, and it just didn't, didn't hold up. So the head gasket's on, and the head's ready to go back in. Dan's going to help guide the cherry picker in. We're going to put the studs in. Studs go in dry because they're studs. All oh, right. Um, then we're going to put the we'll put the juice on them. I do them this way. I don't think that I need to put anything on the threads because they're studs. <laughs> Probably difference of opinions on that, but you have these in a specific order? Nope. I cleaned them. <laughs> I decided I'd get the blue paint off of them since. Hmm. I forgot they were blue. Yeah. Now that we got the head in here, let's scoot the audience in a little bit closer, huh? All right, that should get everybody a little bit closer. Boy, wouldn't it be funny if I forgot to turn on the microphone? Nope, it's on. <laughs> I've done that a few times. Ah. Simple mistake is a pain in the butt. Uh, I want to put this one here. I'm putting the ones that don't have any blue paint on them on the outside. I'm being anal. Which one is that? Non-blue paint, perfect. <laughs> so last time, I, uh, last time I retorqued after one heat cycle as a precaution, and I'm gonna do the same thing this time because it worked. I'm just, not in the mood for any problems. It seemed to be sealed up really well last time. Just gonna take the Allen and I'm gonna snug these just a hair. Because they do like to move when you torque them. I just assume not have that happen. Yeah, I put these in the ultrasonic earlier in the oh, nice. I skipped one. How did I do that? There should only be one left. There is, in fact, only one left. Well, that's good. We didn't end up with any extras or run out. That's nice. Okay. I already did that one. Just take them down till they stop. These are supposed to only be hand tight. ARP tells you exactly how to do these. I know you guys can't really see exactly what's going on here, but it's a little hard to get the camera in here when my head needs to be right here, and then I'm gonna to torque this in a minute. My body's gonna to have to be in front of the car, so I can't put you in front of the car because I've done this so many times, I know exactly where I have to be to get my torque wrench to clear. This is fifth, sixth, Seventh times a charm? I don't know. I'm not sure. I've lost count. This is uh, Ford getting back at me for buying a Ford when I'm a Chevy guy. That's what this is. <clears throat> All right. You didn't bring on your torque wrench? Yeah, I think it's on the. It's there. Yep. We're gonna do the same thing. Forty. Forty. 60, 70, 80. All right, that's good enough for the Perfect. You want to use the shortest extension, by the way, folks. The longer the extension <laughs> is, the less torque you're going to get on the, well, you need to do on the nut. This. We are. We're going to do that. We're, we're going to put that on there. Um, but I was going to show that um, six-point socket. It's better to use a six-point socket. All right, so we have to put the ARP low torque or uh, ultra torque. I keep calling it low torque. I don't know why. Um, but uh, we have to put that on here. It's got to go on the face of the head of the boss. They call these bosses, by the way, the, where the nuts or the, where the washers ride. Um, got to get that on there. Um, and then on the top of the washer and on the bottom of the nut. Um, it's very important. And on the threads, absolutely on the threads. Um, so I just, this is nice. Now they, when they give it to you, it comes in a little plastic thing. Now I've done, 
I so many engines, I, I have a jar of this stuff, but, um, uh, and it's, this stuff lasts a long time. Um, but, uh, do you want to put this back in? No, I'll do that last. We'll do that after we get the head torque down. That's the thermostat <laughs> bolt, by the way, he's asking about. Um, you got to put this on here. I explained in the last video, it's very important. This is what gives you consistent torque. Uh, they gave it to you in a little plastic thing, which kind of sucks. This has a little applicator brush on it, and it allows you to get it in here, <clears throat> get it all the way around the threads. You know, it's going to make a little mess, but you know what? A little mess is better than uh, not having enough torque on your head. It does make a mess, but... So we're just going to go around. <laughs> Don't be shy with it either. Does it burn off? What's that? Does it burn off? When it a little gets bit. Hot? A little bit. These ones that are, all these ones on this side are next to an exhaust port. So they, it does burn off a little bit and it'll stink. Um, You'll notice this stuff feels very gritty. It's because it's a heavy molly paste. And it, it just it keeps things moving under extreme pressures, which is exactly what you want in the case of these head bolts, studs in this case. But you use this on the bolts too, by the way. Now, if you're interested in knowing this, you know, like on a Chevy, for whatever reason, GM decided that it would be awesome for all the head bolts to go into a water jacket which I always loved. Although, I've never really had one leak if you do them right. Some people do have them leak though, because um, they don't know that and they don't put thread sealer on them. You don't use this, you use the ARP thread sealer, which also will give you the right torque. Um, that's pretty important. Um, if you don't put that thread sealer on there, the water will find its way up and it'll leak. Not necessarily into the engine, but it'll leak at least externally. I've seen that happen. So you have to make sure you put the PTFE stuff. I buy the ARP stuff just so there's no question about it. I think it's probably the same as the, uh, it's likely that it's the same as, you know, Loctite brand. It comes in the same kind of looking tube, but it might not be, and I don't bother chancing it. That little tube lasts a long time, just like this. You know, you buy this for 20, 30 bucks, I forget what it is. and this lasts quite a while. Am I talking enough for everybody? Am I going to get more comments and complaints about how much I talk? Good. Yeah, everybody kind of learns differently, you know. I, I learn by watching, quite frankly, but I do find that I, one of my traits, one of the traits that I think I have that's good is uh, I like to explain things clear for people good info and they can roll it back and rewind it and watch it however many times they want. Some of these I didn't put quite enough on here. Like I said, don't be shy with this. It's very important. You're going to want <clears throat> washer and nut or just washers? Uh, we'll just put the washers first and then uh, All right, that's good enough. They all look good. Don't accidentally double up your washers, although I'd hope that you would find that. You might not. That would be a mistake. You can go through and we're going to check them. Make sure that I got one on every single one. If I touch each one, I know that I checked it. All right, that looks good. By the way, this front stud, I've talked about this a thousand times. And everybody that's worked on one of these should know this. This one goes into a water jacket. It's the only one on this motor that goes in a water jacket. It's got PTFE sealant on it. I put it on there already off camera. This is what I'm doing. I'm putting it on the face of it and a little bit in the threads, although I've got some on the threads here. You, you can't really overdo it with this stuff. Just keep that in mind. And I'll show you the torque sequence. I think I've shown it before. I know it by heart in my head. Gee, I wonder why. You can only imagine why I know this torque sequence by heart. Couldn't be because the head's been on and off more times than Carter's got little pills. I wonder how many people are actually going to watch it. Do you think I should speed this up? Huh. Curious. You know, they can always speed it up on YouTube. It's true. I do, by the way, I do say that pretty often, or I've said it in the past. <laughs> If you guys find that you think I'm talking too much, speed the speed up. You can still hear what I'm saying, but it'll go twice as fast. 
you, know, you could speed it up one and a half times or whatever floats your boat. Um, there's a little, if you look down in the bottom right hand corner, there is a way to speed up the video. So speed it up. Or you could just fast forward completely. You're not going to hurt my feelings. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to run them down by hand. Um, you don't really need to do this in order, but um, I'm doing it in order just because it's ingrained in my head. Three, four. This will take a little while because these ones I couldn't get to by hand. So we're going to... I'm going to probably do, it's 40, but I'm going to, I'm going to cinch them first, less than 40. Uh, it's just, you really don't want to go, you don't want to go from it having zero t tension on it to putting 40 directly on it. At least I don't like doing it that way. Um, it's probably fine not to, but um, I just prefer to do them this way. See what I mean about the torque wrench? You know, you run out of room pretty easily. Keep that in mind, because what you don't want to do, and I think I might have mentioned this before, is you don't want to get to a point where you can't move the torque wrench anymore and you're close to the torque and then you stop. Because then the stick chin will overcome the torque and you actually won't get it up to value. So that's just really important. I'll show you what that is when I get one that does it. All right, torque sequence Yep. one. Here we go, this is 40. See, that's what I'm talking about. You don't want to have to stop. One. See, you don't want to do that, that's bad. See what happened there? See, it clicked 40 when I started again? You don't want to do that. So, what you want to do is you make sure you leave yourself enough room to be able to swing it. So Dan, I'm going to have to probably, yep. on some of these, walk back and forth. Maybe. Just some of these are really hard to get right. See, I'm running out of room. That's okay if it starts moving and then clicks, but three. Four. Five. Six. So you'll feel the studs move a lot when you do that first pass. So we're going to go from 40, we're going to go to 80. Or, sorry, Jesus, boy. <laughs> like we're going all the way to 80. No, we're not going all the way to 80. I'm just thinking with my head up my ass. 60? We are going, in fact, to 60. We're going to go 60, 70, 80. I like doing them in four steps. That's my way of doing it. Different strokes for different folks. We're back at one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. These are always so hard to get to. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. 
14. Who knew I'd learn how to count to 14 while doing this? <laughs> 70. The lock. I need to give you a torque wrench. And by the way, you really should get your torque wrenches calibrated. Mine is not. But y'all should. 70. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 80. Now, how I do these, I do 80 <laughs> twice, and if it moves the first and second time, I do it a third time. Um, don't do that when you have metal to metal surfaces. When you talk about a compressible gasket, you want to do that because you want to get the compression out of it. You want it to get up the torque. It loses a lot of torque in the first heat cycle because it compresses from heat and, uh, from heat and uh, cooling, the expansion, the thermal expansion, it loses a bunch. All right, so we're at 80. We're going to go around 80 at least once, usually almost always twice. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14. All right. <laughs> Must have accidentally. Yep. Okay. 80 one more time. <laughs> and it'll move. I guarantee it. I'll probably only go around twice, though. Yep. It moved just a hair. That one didn't. That one didn't. Doing pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Studs are really good about holding their torque. Okay. Yeah, so that, this time. that does it for a uh, head torque. Interesting uh, observation I was making here. And I'm curious if Ford did this for a reason. I didn't know. I never noticed this, although this is a uh, a later head that I've never seen before. This is a D8, so this would be a 78 head. It had a 69 head on it. If we look at this right here, this doesn't have any relief. This has got a lot of meat on it right here from underneath the spark plug all the way to the edge. We got a lot of meat here. Um, this is where the coolant passages are. They're at every single spark plug hole. They're, that little triangular uh, passage is right here. Let's go look at the 69 head. This is a 69 head right here. See how the relief cuts short? It doesn't go all the way to the edge. I'm wondering if Ford did that because they were having problems with these leaking. Uh, it's possible. I, I can tell you if there's more meat here, it's less likely to warp in this area. Um, so that's just an interesting observation there for you from a 69, an earlier head. Maybe, I'm not sure when that would have changed. This is a 78 head that's on the car, but uh, it's definitely got more meat there. All right, we just jumped ahead and we put the... the uh, rocker assembly back on i did check uh preload sort of kind of did a gross check on it kind of bolted it down and threw a dial indicator on it it's probably somewhere in 110 120 thousandths preload range which is totally fine i didn't expect it to be far off but i want to check it anyways um so those get torqued down to 35 foot pounds that's already done 
uh, the next and my least favorite part is putting the exhaust manifold back on. And uh, I thought about pulling it off. I've got another donut and putting it on the head before we put the head on. And um, honestly, I think it probably was easier to balance the head getting it on last time with the, with the manifold on it, but we didn't do it that was that way this time. So anyways, we'll just get that bolted up. I already cleaned the bolts yesterday. Um, put a little bit of copper anti-seize, like I mentioned before. You know, copper anti-seize works real well, high temp, make it so you can get them back out later. Yeah, we just went ahead and fast forwarded, so it's ready to start. Uh, coolant, check. Exhaust, check. Sniper, check. Everything, check. Oh, yeah. Well, it helped to hook up the battery. You know, minor details, though. Minor. So, um, John's going to be here in just a few minutes, so we'll probably wait for him before we fire it up. Uh, and what we'll, we'll do is we'll throw you up on a tripod, and we'll see if it lights off. Uh, your idea is way better for the cable. Putting the nuts, the uh, rib nuts through the valve cover. Yeah. That's yeah, the a only much thing better is idea. It flexes a little. I took the return spring off, though. Yeah, it does crap flex, too. You know, well, with the return spring on it, it did. I hate not running a return spring, but it's totally drivable like this. It's a little too heavy. All right, let's see if it starts. I'm sure it'll do something. Don't know what. I'll just leave whatever tunes in it. In it. This will make a little bit of noise for a little bit. Yeah, they need to pump up. Fifty pounds of oil pressure. Small oil, but I did coat the cylinders. Uneventful. Yeah, the are gliding down. You smell the fresh paint. Yeah. Uh, it's running way better than it did before. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how mine ran right there. Just like that. Okay. Burgles and all, man. Okay. I mean, that doesn't bother me. Log is a log. There's nothing more to be said about that. Boy, it's burning off a lot. Of, I don't know if that's the paint burning off or the oil. Uh, probably a little column A, a little column B. You can just put this together, right? Yeah. I use a lot of that ARP stuff. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. smell like oil. No. It smells like something else. Yeah, it could be paint. It could be the new Rebel How long Flex did this jet? motor run since it was built? Half an hour, 45 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah, man. They yeah. smoke for half an hour. Yeah, the idle AFR is actually staying really nice and steady. Is it? Okay, yeah, good. It's not, it's really not leaking the then. So this is typical, the way it's shuttering. I mean, I figured I could get it idling better, but okay. okay. Maybe if you idle it a little higher. Yeah. But at anything low, I never got it to be 
Oh, okay. Is it still going up? What? Where's the last not open yet? Come on, baby. You sure you put it in the right direction? Yeah. Positive. There it goes. Wait, let it. It's going. Yeah, it's pissing the air. I can feel it. I can feel the bubble. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, shit. Fine. I'm going to burn myself. It's coming. Here you are. You drove all day, and then I uh, doused you in hot coolant. <laughs> <laughs> I like wrenching, don't worry about it. It usually, the thermostat usually opens about 210. Yeah. And, and uh, not normally. Normally it opens up at like 185, but during the first start. If we let this go, it's going to go. Yeah. Hey, brother man, can you start it? Yeah, you want to start game? Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get the pump to move fluid, and then maybe this won't be a fucking steam engine. There we go. That's it. Beautiful. Now top it off. I'm sure it is. I'm sure that doesn't now. Good. You know, my uh, my log with the sniper was very finicky about re entry into idle control. <laughs> yeah, and anything like at idle. Mine did it too, man. It was sometimes over and under shoot. And this is about the idle quality I had too. Yours is probably a little worse because you have a bigger cam. Yeah. The 1100 was really good about it, but they built the 1100 for the shortest. Yeah. Honestly, you could maybe even give it another 100 RPM and it might be a little better. Yeah, it should be about 750 right now. All right, well, as you can see in the last segment, we got it running. Uh, <laughs> a little, little trouble with air in the system. I just wasn't expecting it. It's been so good about getting the air out uh, when you first fire it up that I wasn't expecting it to boil over. And it <laughs> boiled over, and luckily John was here and Dan were here, you know. Both them were here, and we were able to kind of manage it real quick. So no problems there. It cooled off right away. Got it uh, fed it some fluids. Um, it sounds to me like it's running just fine. Um, we won't know till we drive it, but it seems uh, it seems like it's fine. Uh, so tomorrow we're going to pull the valve cover, and we'll uh, do a, uh, a retorque on the head just because it worked last time, so we'll do it again, and uh, we'll go from there. So this should pretty much wrap this one up. Um, you know, I think we'll do an update after we get the tune kind of settled a little bit. But I think it's running, sounds like it's running fine. And what was good was John being here. He had basically the same motor except a little bit smaller cam. And uh, John was able to tell me, oh, yeah, it's normal. It sounds good. Sounds like my motor. The numbers, he looked at some of the readings on the sniper. He said it looks real stable. It looks just, he was able to do a comparison for me. So that was uh, very valuable. So it was great. We got to meet John. That was wonderful. Um, super nice guy. You know, he's one of the admins on the Vintage 6 Forum, by the way. If you're not a member and you have a, a inline 6 Mustang, go ahead and jump on that forum and join up. Uh, the admins are all just absolutely wonderful. So uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap this one up.